Welcome back everyone! I took a six month break from Fallout to play, well, other games, but now I'm back and I hope this Children of the Atom Settlement at the Decayed Reactor site and the Glowing Sea was well worth the wait. And to celebrate this occasion I invested 140 euros in a professional table mic from Rode, which is so huge, oh my god, but hopefully this means the end of hissing and noise in my recordings. Unfortunately, the frame rate is going to be atrocious from certain angles. I built a lot of lights and needed tons of wires. It started lagging big time even before I added settlers. Amazing. I didn't turn the interface off this time because I named my settlers and want to show them off. I'm using rename anything. Okay, so these children of yeah. Atom are followers of a ghoulification cult. Their high confessor named Lawrence is a ghoul. He turned after the war as a young man as he was roaming the mysterious glowing sea in a poorly patched up hazmat suit looking for treasure that want. nobody else was brave enough to claim. He started to feel sick, lose his hair, but instead of dying, he became a ghoul. After the initial shock, he thought it was the best thing that ever happened to him. Eternal life. Well, sort of. He found the children of Atom in the crater, which is very close to the settlement by the way, trying to understand how exactly this happened. Some of the children were in awe of such a precious gift from Adam. He founded a branch of the church dedicated to turning its followers into ghouls as well, by their own choice. A number of these cultists were about the only people besides Lawrence who were thrilled by the idea. They decided becoming ghouls was the next step in evolution and Atom's plan for mankind. As you can see, these children are very protective of their settlement. They are not docile pacifists like their brethren in the crater. Yeah. They are worried that if word gets around about the ghoulification project, the brotherhood or other groups will disapprove of their calling and try to kill them. Lawrence is currently experimenting with different radiation exposure levels. Most of the followers die, there's a graveyard close by, but new people join all the time, willing to take the gamble. This makeshift check shower is from a tiny but cool showers mod. Check out my mod list in the description for link. And the blacksmith is not at her workstation. Sorry about that. By the way, the nuclear reactor here is non-functional, of course. They put a generator inside, hence the black smoke. It's make-believe, but who cares, right? Now, truth be told, the chief motivation behind this movement was a little girl that Lawrence rescued from a group of feral dogs shortly after he turned into a ghoul. She was six years old and didn't mind his appearance. Her name was Lillian, or Lily as Lawrence called her. They traveled together and quickly became a scavenging duo. Over the years, he realized that anybody he cared about would die. The thought of losing his adopted daughter made him wish there was a reliable method of turning people into ghouls, so that they could be together forever. When the girl was all grown, she agreed to be a test subject. She believed in him. By that time, Lawrence already had a small following who were eager to see if his methods worked. Dozens died before he dared expose his daughter to the treatment. A sort of cult had formed around the desired transformation of the girl who charmed everyone. They fantasized about her becoming a sentient, glowing one, a sort of god in their confused minds. They were eager to die for her. It didn't work and she eventually died. Devastated, he wanted to give up and die right there beside her. During her last days, he kept her hidden, locked away. He didn't dare tell the followers that Lily was dying. He was grateful for their faith and sacrifice. So he decided to continue his experiments in her memory. However, he knew he wouldn't find enough volunteers if he revealed his ultimate failure. So, after the 23-year-old girl took a last breath, he snuck out of the settlement, burned her body out of sight, took the box with the ashes and headed for good neighbor to talk to his buddy Hancock about an actress willing to masquerade as his transformed daughter. He did find a woman who was moved by his story and agreed to help him. 
On their way back to the glowing sea, he told her everything about his adopted daughter, and when the transformed girl revealed herself to the fathers, they bought the ruse. They bought it because they wanted to believe it. The ghoul version of Lillian liked her charm, if one paid attention, but nobody did. And after a while, few people who once knew her were still alive. And so, the ghoulification cult around reborn mother Lillian began, and Lawrence became a legend among the children of Atom. All of this happened 37 years ago. Nobody else has managed ghoulification yet. <laughs> surprise, surprise! But there's one woman who looks promising, actually, and we will pay her a visit shortly. Yeah, a lot of people have died for Lawrence's dream. One could argue it's a suicide cult more than anything, but the children don't look at death the way we do, so all this dying is totally fine by them. I spent a lot of time handcrafting my children of Atom. Took me about 10 hours on top of the maybe 70 I already spent on the actual settlement. As you may know, it's not possible to modify a settler's appearance, but there's a mod called Spawnable Unique Settlers that lets you spawn settlers with a unique reference ID via console that you can then customize in the looks menu like your own character. All these settlers spawn with the same face, one male, one female, and to keep track of which IDs you've already used, you need to write them down somewhere. It can get really messy if you don't. The mod itself works flawlessly though, and I can't believe I discovered it so late. Like, oh my god, all the new possibilities for roleplaying that have opened up. I can now create real raiders with scars and face paint. The mod was godsend for my children of Atom too. None of the usual settler mods have the falling out hair in their algorithm. Look at my cool herbalist from a mod I discovered recently called Gatherers Out There. It's going to be the coolest mod created for Fallout 4 to date, really. What it does is, it lets you assign settlers as herbalists, hunters and scavengers via their unique workstations. They will hunt and gather resources in real time. They will actually go out and do the task. You can follow them to one of the surrounding landmarks. Their radius of operation is fairly large, about 9 map squares, I believe. Any scavenging station you have in your workshop, vanilla or from a mod, can be converted into a gatherer's out there workstation. This means I could make my super mutant scavengers go out into the commonwealth. I followed them from Markwater to Quincy where we fought all the raiders there together. Isn't this the coolest mod ever? This amazing mod basically lets you repopulate the map with your own NPCs. You will now meet your settlers out in the world going about their business. Hunters will form hunting parties on their own. If there are unemployed settlers, sometimes they bring back a temporary hunting pet. One day a glowing mongrel in full armor greeted me. Seriously, how cool is that? You can also ask hunters to come assist you on your hunt. It's incredible. I've converted settlers from my previous settlements and I can't wait to meet them on my own scavenging runs. Do check out this mod, please, you won't regret it. As you've probably noticed, the ENB is turned off for this video. The one I'm usually using, Photorealistic Commonwealth, turns the glowing sea into radish brown ugliness. It subdues all light sources and simply doesn't look great in certain locations. I'll turn the ENB back on during my end of video flyby, so you'll be able to judge for yourself. I'm always building with the ENB turned off anyway, and by now, I gotta say, I've gotten used to vanilla so much. Then I now kind of prefer it over the sharp and EMB with his radish tin. You hear about that farm run by ghouls? <laughs> Isn't that something? I might try a lightweight EMB in the future that preserves the vanilla colors and just makes them a bit more vibrant. There was a recent red scorpion attack, as you can see. At first, I thought these modded glowing sea settlement locations don't get attacked at all because my institute base has never been attacked, not once. No critters around, nothing, just peaceful. This settlement did get attacked eventually. 
first by ferals coming down a slope, another in scorpion incident, and the mythical dust cloud that lives inside the decayed reactor will respawn. It dies quickly however, so that's not really an issue. Here's another of my upgraded scavengers. The mod changes the settler's name to their respective the job, and once they have the new name, you cannot override it with rename anything anymore. I spent a lot of time setting up the structure inside the right hand reactor. At first, I just couldn't get it to look good. I'm still not 100% happy with it, but I hope you like it. But first, let's have a look at the home of High Confessor Lawrence and Reborn Mother Lillian. They have a tiny, tiny private shower room. The building is rat free thanks to a radiation cleaning fan. Whenever I need to forward time but the game won't let me because of a rat storm, I can do it here. Very handy. Great view over the followers living below. The sleeping quarters are always locked. These are the ashes of poor Lily, hidden from the eyes of the children, and there's a picture of her inside a locket. Fake Lillian's room is very basic, but she enjoys the adjuration she receives here. She spends a lot of time talking to the cultists. She actually likes them. A lot. The acceptance of ghouls is a welcome change from the hostility elsewhere that she received for 200 years. Farming is as honest as honest work gets. Alright, let's go inside the ghoulification research and experimentation reactor. There's one small opening just big enough to fit through. I tried to make this monstrous construction look somewhat believable by adding big support beams. The upper deck is supposed to be held in place by horizontal beams connected to the reactor walls. Which of course is total bullshit, but so is everything about the Fallout franchise. These are the treatment chambers. The settlers receive concentrated radiation through the release of these traps. This is Sister Audrey, our most promising test subject. As you can see, she's been through a lot of treatments already, but maybe she'll become the first true reborn mother. Since I'm not sure if triggering these traps will kill a settler, I'll demonstrate it on an empty chamber. Getting the wall conduits to fit onto the chairs was extremely fiddly work. Ugh. These are preparation chairs that shoot axe cells into the body so that the test subjects don't die immediately. Again, I glitched the axe cells onto the chairs. On the top floor we have the lab where Lawrence and two assistants are trying to figure out the right radiation doses. Hey. Sister Loretta is a true child of Adam and immune to radiation. She's just old now. She was once a member of the children inside the crater. 
This school is not static and will despawn soon. The guy who made that wasteland added placeable corpses at my request, but they still despawn sadly. I'll talk about the scheduled dispatcher in another video. It's not really relevant for the settlement. Can't remember the last time I had clean fingernails. This is just a small lookout without much use outside of maintenance repairs. These belong to the radiation cleaning mod and collect dirty water. I roleplay that this irradiated water is used in the lab. There's no access to those on top of the other reactor. I guess they climb up there to get the water or something? If you're wondering how Lawrence got the money and resources to build all this, Let's just say Hancock is a big supporter of the Ghoulification project and has poured a ton of caps into this endeavor. Oops, pack Robin incident, let me fix that. Little jab at Fallout 76, yup, I couldn't help myself. This shop is no ripoff, however. Here the children can get new robes, mother statues and a number of other items they need for their modest and, let's be honest, often short lives. Ground Zero is obviously the bar. I installed decontamination arcs that one could roleplay or spray an extra layer of rats onto the cultists before they sit down to sip their nuclear cocktails. The white bottles are holy water. It's a craftable consumable that comes with the amazing Church of Atom mod, without which this settlement wouldn't have been possible, so thank you! The other reactor is the actual church, where Lawrence holds her sermons and reborn mother Lillian can be observed in all her glory. You know what I call a good day? One that ends without an empty stomach. If you ain't been up to see Grey Garden, you should... Yes, yes, I've been to Grey Garden many times. Please shut up. This outfit is so damn cool, isn't it? The throne belongs to the mod Far Harbor Decor. I added a front beam because otherwise the faction cloth was floating in the air. My part, but it's ours. That's important. Get back to Diamond City one of these days. Biggest town I ever saw. All the guards are named zealots. Most of them used to be mercenaries. They figured if these nut jobs find the key to immortality, it's worth sticking around. Pay is decent enough, and shooting critters is easy work.
Yes, one toilet for over 30 cultists. Don't think about it. The local fauna that can be hunted seems to change daily based on which critters are actually around. God, this mod! And here the mythical death claw has respawned. Almost died too quickly for me to hit the record button. Let me show you a few more faces previously missing in action. Brother Warren reminds me a bit of an old chick, Gyllenhaal, or, or is that just me? Ah, here's the blacksmith finally! <coughs> Clarence is one of two adult farmers. Three kids do the rest of the farming. Alright, let's follow Scavenger Melvin to his destination so that you can see what that looks like. It's mostly just a slow ass walk. I cut it a bit, so I hope it's not too boring. I was surprised that this mod even works in the glowing sea, but sure does. Out here there's reduced landmarks density, and maybe that's why scavengers often return empty handed, but the hunters do hunt and the herbalist does find stuff. Herbalists have a crouch animation. I witnessed this following the one at Bunker Hill. I'm not sure about the scavengers. As you see here, Melvin just stops and walks back instead of going inside the cabin, which I assume was his destination. Still, cool, cool mod. Lauren spends a lot of time wandering out into the wilderness next to his house these days. It feels like a meditative walk, contemplating his calling. Sometimes he mumbles to himself, lost in a conversation with his dead daughter. And here's the usual bird's view angle of the settlement, this time with the ENB turned on. The flashing white light is an EMB glitch, I believe. I had this happen in Skyrim too. This was one of the most time consuming settlements to build and this video took forever to make. Let me know how you liked the result in the comments. I've also updated the mod list, which now includes the Bethesda Net mod unlocked settlement objects. I feel so dirty for caving in and making an account, but I just needed to have all the things. I've already started working on another settlement weeks ago, the children only fort at Ten Pines Bluff, and the video will be called Little Landlight Redux. I'm in the clutter phase already, however, it might take a while until it's actually ready.
Thank you all for your patience waiting for another settlement showcase all these months. The next one won't take seven months, I promise.